you might be aware, we have some challenges in mathematics education. Uh, don't worry, I won't try to address them all during my five minutes. <laughs> As humans, I claim we are all mathematical. So yet, why are so few of us deemed proficient? I think this is a problem of mathematical authority, of ownership of knowledge. My goal is to leave you with an image of what mathematics education could be after this era of standards. I hope to press the way you think about mathematics teaching and learning, and I hope to tell you a little bit of my story. About 10 years ago, I worked with a group revising one of the NSF-funded high school curriculum and teacher development projects. Uh, nonchalantly, we agreed to a sort of mantra for our work, don't tell the learner how to think. As a high school math educator, I took seriously that charge. I pressed myself to educate in the root sense of the word, to induce. I worked to draw out thinking. Nowadays, I'm an epistemologist. That's a $5 word for someone who thinks, who studies ways of knowing. Uh, thinking about ways of knowing, I found constructivism. Yes, I do know. Here in California, you've got to be careful saying that word. <laughs> constructivism as a learning theory, I don't think is very well understood because, remember, it does not tell us how to teach, nor does it tell us how to write curriculum. Constructivism does have two key premises, the first embraced, but the second often ignored. First, constructivism says that the learner actively creates knowledge, as opposed to having it dumped into their mind. The second principle is a result of the first. If our ways of knowing are constructing, constructed through our experiencing of the world, there is no way of knowing if those experiences construct the true world. So, a friend of mine works as a social linguist regarding uh, recording endangered languages. She shared a story of an early meeting with a woman of the Kickapoo community. A loud noise had occurred and made them look off to the side. The woman asked, do you think you saw the same things I did? My friend realized, no, she wasn't raised Kickapoo. The woman then asked, do you think my Kickapoo sister saw the same things? My friend Off was also taught a bigger lesson. In American culture, when something is known, we write it down. Then others read it, refer to it, cite it, it becomes a truth. For the Kickapoo, in oral culture, once something is written, it is no longer true. Imagine the resulting dilemma for this group as they wish to record its language, but they have a story about how humans save themselves at the end of the world. Math educators face a similar challenge. How do we teach children who may have a radically different way of knowing? The second principle of constructivism reminds us that there are ways of knowing this thing we call mathematics. It suggests that rather than focusing on a knowing of mathematical truth, more attention ought to be paid how each of us knows our own mathematics. Which brings me to a document with some neat potential. Reasoning. I like this idea. I interpret it as thinking. That active construction of the learner, that first constructivist premise, and sense making. <laughs> Instead of reading this as making sense of mathematics, I read sense making as an effort to understand how another is thinking mathematically. So NCTM is now arguing for children's mathematical thinking and interacting. This sounds good because it makes me think of equity. I argue in equity three ideas must be seriously considered access, action, and authority. This third, authority, is where we squash children. <coughs> Constructivism tells us children's ways of math being mathematical are their own. They are authors. Yet school works to tell them they are wrong. Joe Bowler's relational equity helps us to value interaction in order to understand another's thinking. So my equity, owning authority for thinking and valuing the effort of interacting. Again, reasoning and sensing. So I've watched three phases in this era of standards, very quickly. Goals, benchmarks, then standardizations. <laughs> Notice their trajectory. What happens if don't tell the learner how to think? So what do we do next in mathematics education? I think Dewey told us in 1902. He suggests, his suggestion was not the promotion of a laissez-faire interaction between the teacher and the child. Rather, he argued that by knowing the discipline well, the teacher must determine the learning environment of the child, and by indirection direct. Yet the case remains to be a child. Education is for the exercise of the present capacities of the child. So I would suggest that a sort of mathematics that emerges from the activity of children could be what constitutes mathematics education in the post standard era. 
Kozel said that his parents did not ask him what he learned in school. Instead, they asked, were you taught to believe, or did they teach you to think? Mm -hmm.